He's gonna say something really good, yeah. Stop! Sorry about that, Agent 69. We're still ironing out the kinks. Kinks? Well, can you iron more quickly? You're gonna give me away. This guy works for NASA. No, I don't. He works for NASA. I'm not making this shit up. Go nuts on my nuts. It's me, <laughs> the creaky blinder. Now then, gullibility. Now, gullibility is a failure in somebody's social intelligence. And what that means is they can easily be tricked or manipulated into believing something completely implausible. It's closely related to credulity, which is the tendency to believe unlikely propositions that are completely unsupported by evidence. Flat Earth. I'm being that Flat Earth shit, man. I just still can't fathom how anybody with common sense would think that the Earth was a globe. Well, 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 what a coincidence, because I can't fathom how anybody could possibly think that the Earth isn't a globe. Who would have thought we had so much in common? I know it sounds crazy, but I tried to debunk it. I tried my best. It was like 2015, 2016. I tried to debunk it. Well, then you obviously didn't. Let's try that again, shall we, folks? Well, then you obviously didn't try that hard, did you? Because you can debunk the whole flat earth argument with a stick. Yeah, a stick. Because if you place a stick in the ground, as the sun shines on it, it casts a shadow that moves as time passes. I've never really been completely sure why, though, but I think it's kind of something along the lines of that we rotate at 0 .000694 revolutions per minute but there's a much simpler way to describe it a 15 degree per hour drift 15 degrees per hour <laughs> thanks bob and if you place two different sticks on two different parts of the globe they do not cast the same shadow which is exactly what they would do if as you morons say the earth was flat the earth is flat and i start thinking like okay if the earth is flat then what's outer space See what I was saying? See where this video is going? He's clearly been reading The Idiot's Guide to Flat Earth. Not that there's any other kind of guide to flat Earth for non-idiots, because only an idiot would believe that the Earth is flat. So I type it up. Boom. My favorite YouTuber just happened to pop up. At the time, my favorite. But RTB, man, RTB, man. Please, go subscribe to RTB. Okay. Now I'm gonna guess that either there's a different RTV or you're learning everything you know about Flat Earth from an Indian news channel. Odd TV. Not RTV. ODD TV. He's his favorite YouTuber and yet he doesn't know that he's called ODD. Brilliant. Must be that stupid accent he's got. I start pointing out shit like, you know, the moon landing. We went way back in 1968. We still ain't been back since. Like, come on, bro. Anyways, check this out, man. Uh, TV. Check this out. There's this one video where the actor is going around a corner and he is faded out before making it completely out of the viewer's sight. Let's not forget space bubbles. Space bubbles. Bubbles in a vacuum. <laughs> bubbles in a vacuum. Funny, he doesn't look like an astrophysicist, does he? Or any other kind of scientifically educated person. The problem is with flat earthers, and I saw Professor Dave say this in a video and I thought it was brilliant. The only way they can think of a vacuum is that thing that sucks dust off the carpet. But sadly for flat earthers, that's not the way a vacuum behaves in the context of space. Now when you talk about the vacuum of space, all you're talking about is an area that has nothing in it. 
sucking has got nothing to do with it. <clears throat> sucking has got nothing to do with it. It just means there's nothing there. See that shit? Come on, in a vacuum of space, come on, people. You know, it's a high school, middle school, man. Come on, this, this shouldn't be possible. But sadly for Flat Earthers, it is possible. And I'll tell you why. When the astronauts go out on a spacewalk and they exit the ISS through the air vent, the air is released into space. And as the air expands, it cools. The water vapour freezes into small icy crystals, and then those crystals slowly sublimate, which means that they turn back into water to alleviate the problem of contributing to the debris that's already present in space. Dave Williams about to move out of the Quest airlock. Uh, those particles that you see emanating from uh, the airlock is uh, said by the EVA officer Paul Bame in Mission Control to be uh, particles of water from the crew's uh, sublimators on their spacesuits. Undeniable. Well, as far as I can see, the only thing that's undeniable is you have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. Now, sometimes that happens to me, and do you know what I do? I choose not to talk about that particular subject because I don't want to make myself look like an idiot. But that doesn't seem to bother flat earthers. You're trying to commentate on something that you have no clue about. So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air, can you be more specific, air bubbles? So yeah, like a lot of times during the footage, the NASA footage, you can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. Oh, and it just happens that actors train in an underwater tank. Come on, man. They train at underwater tanks. Come on, man. Well, yes, they do, and it's actually called a neutral buoyancy lab. You do realize, you and all other flat earthers, that traveling into space is actually pretty dangerous. You don't just rock up at NASA HQ, get an interview where the interviewer says, uh, so have you ever flown? Have you ever been up really high? Yes. You're a perfect candidate for a trip to the ISS. It takes years of training, and they use these neutral buoyancy labs to simulate what it'll feel like to them when they're actually in space and, more importantly, on the ISS. So I'm failing to see what's so absolutely unbelievable about that. NASA tells you that the Earth is photoshopped. Because it has to be. I'm not making this shit up. Oh no, I know you're not making it up, but they don't actually say, and I don't want to come across as nitpicking, but they don't actually say the Earth is Photoshop. What they actually say is, photographs of the Earth are Photoshopped. And they're right, they do have to be. Can you think of any way to take a picture of a ball from all sides at the same time without the need to join those pictures together to form the ball? A photoshopped image does not equate to the Earth being flat. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. Yeah. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection. This guy works for NASA. He works for NASA. Well, duh, obviously, you didn't need to say it twice. Why would somebody who didn't work for NASA be producing their images for them? When you go on YouTube, this is what you will see. It's not a live feed at all. It's all CGI. CGI. I gotta be honest, I was starting to panic that there wouldn't be an opportunity for me to use my CGI clip, but flat earthers are nothing if not predictable. Some NASA actors say that you can totally see stars when you're in space. Stars. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah, uh, yeah. so yeah, because yeah, you time. can see, yeah, because yeah. you can. 
He's gonna say something really good, yeah. There are some places in the world, country, rural areas, that you can look up and literally see a sky full of stars. Am I wrong? You seen it with your own two eyes. So tell me, how come when you get closer to the stars, they disappear? Closer? So traveling from Earth to the ISS puts you closer to the stars. That just shows small-minded thinking. All right, technically, yes, you are ever so slightly closer, but the difference in distance is negligible. Have you ever noticed that we don't measure the distance to stars in kilometers or miles, we measure it in light years? Because they're pretty far away. Now, viewing the stars from the moon is no different to viewing it from Earth. I know why you think that you know stars aren't visible from space. It's because most of the photographs taken from space don't show any stars. But that's all to do with the speed of the camera lens and exposure and I'm not even going to get into that because it's a really stupid argument anyway. But of course you can see stars from space if it's the right time of day. Imagine trying to view stars from Earth with a street lamp in your field of vision. It would be near as damn it impossible to see the stars because the light would be stopping you from doing so. Does this really even matter? Yes, you can see stars from space if the conditions are right. You can't always see them, but you can see them. I'm not making this up. As I said earlier, I know you're not making it up, but what you are doing is falling for everything that your hero, ODD TV, is telling you. And sadly for you, he's as equally moronic and stupid as every other flat earther ever. All right, all right, what's this next? But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.